Hey everyone, welcome back to The Homestead. Today, we're excited to start a three-part series on how to restore a damaged or rusted out uh, tool or tool head that you found or have on your homestead. In this case, we've got an eight pound sledge that we found here on our homestead. So this first video is showing you how to restore the head itself. Our next video will be how to seat a new handle on your tool. And then the last video, we're gonna make a strike collar for this sledgehammer. So stay with us and see the first part, how to restore this rusted sledgehammer head. The first part we need to do is to remove the old handle piece that is cracked off and stuck inside of our head. So let's go ahead and do that. All you need is a drill and a hammer with some sort of punch. One of the best ways we found to remove rust from old steel parts is by electrolysis. Electrolysis is simply running an electrical current through an electrolyte solution. An electrolyte solution is just water mixed with either baking soda, which is sodium bicarbonate, or a washing soda, which is sodium carbonate. Okay, let's build our electrolysis tub. I like to use these clear plastic totes. You can use whatever you want. You can use a plastic bucket, five gallon bucket. It really doesn't matter. You just need a container that can hold a decent amount of water where you can suspend your part in the water itself without touching anything else. So we use this plastic tub here and what we've done is we've taken two re pieces of rebar. So you want two steel rods as your electrodes. Those electrodes will go down into the uh, the water, the electrolyte solution, and complete the circuit for your system of electrolysis. So what we're going to use is this um, two amp car battery tender. We've got the alligator clips on the ends here, and we will attach one of those, the positive, to the part itself or to the wire holding the part actually and then the second one to our electrodes. Now the reason I put two electrodes in here is it just gives a better conductivity through the water. I could put three, that would be even better. You can put one, it's no problem. What I've done is I've connected these electrodes with a piece of copper wire on the outside here. You do not want to use copper wire on your part itself because it will cause some nasty corrosion on it and that, because that copper itself will conduct uh, that rust and those particles that are pulling off the steel, it's gonna attach itself to the copper. So we have this copper wire pretty far close to the top of the, uh, the tub here, and we're not gonna let that touch the water. We're gonna fill the water to, it's just about an inch below where those wires come in to connect our electrodes, and that's all they're doing. Now, like I said, you wanna use a wire that's not going to corrode when you hang your part in the solution. So we've got a piece of wood here that's going to go across the top and hold our part. We've got some steel wire and that's all you need. You can use a galvanized wire, it's okay. Make sure you do not use stainless steel wire. Stainless steel wire when it's uh, presented in the solution will start to break down and that coating, I guess, or the treatment to the stainless steel uh, will produce what's called hexavalent chromium. And that is nasty, nasty, toxic stuff you don't want to deal with. Uh, you cannot use aluminum wire either because it will also cause an odd corrosion and I'm not even sure of the, uh, the chemicals, chemical makeup of what happens when aluminum is presented in this type of environment. So, use steel wire, that's it. This is the best. Don't use copper, aluminum, stainless, whatever. All right, steel wire. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our head here, 
and just suspend it from our piece of wood right into our solution. And we don't have our solution here yet. We're gonna show you how to do that in a second. All right, we've got our part suspended in our water here. We've got 15 gallons in this tote. Time to make that electrolyte solution. I'm gonna use the washing soda. We're gonna use one tablespoon per gallon. All right, now comes the fun step. But first, I don't need to tell you to be very cautious when using electricity and water next to one another. So take the necessary precautions, keep this away from kids or where it can get bumped and knocked over, so on and so forth, all right? So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna connect our negative lead to our part or the wire touching the part. And our positive lead is going to go on our rebar electrode over here, which becomes our anode. Now let's go plug this in and show you what happens. Okay, so we're back in the shop here. It's been several hours since we put this in here, about three and a half, and we're gonna see how it is. Let's pull it out of this electrolyte bath and see what we got. First, disconnect your power, then take these off. and inspect what you have. Now it's gonna be a little bit slimy from that, um, that process. So we're gonna take it over to the sink and get this thing kind of scrubbed down. Okay, we took it to the sink and just scrubbed it with a uh, stiff bristle brush. And we, I think we've got a really nice product here. There's really no rust left on it. What you see here is not rust. That's a uh, red paint that it had been painted with at one point. We've also got some black paint on here, so it's probably repainted. I find drop forged heat treated wear safety goggles on it. It's an eight pound. And the only other stamp I see on it is right here. I don't know if the camera will pick that up or not, but it says Japan, which is uh, really cool. It's not uh, cheap Chinese steel, it's Japanese steel, which is much, much, much better. Although I'm not that uh, worried about it since it's just, just a sledgehammer. So you can see the result from the electrolysis did a fantastic job in taking off all of that rust that was on this part here. I'm gonna have a couple of videos coming up in the future where I'm gonna be restoring some other tools that I either found here on the homestead or that were given to me by my mother, which were my great-grandfather's uh, stuff from a, uh, a depot, an army depot in World War II where he was a captain, which is really cool. My dad also owned those tools. So all I'm going to do is take some uh, spray paint and we're going to give this thing a nice coat, let her dry, and then we can also then move on to our next video in the series which is setting this and how to set this on a new handle so make sure you stick around and uh, on our channel and subscribe and check out the next video in that series and then another one beyond that where we're going to be making a strike collar for this and we might do it in two different ways so if you want to see that check that out as well coming up in the future. Let's paint this baby and get it ready to hang on our handle.